Tom here at the Fabcon 3D 2016 and I want to take a look at the cooling and cooling machines because they are living an absolutely all-out approach at 3D printing. So first things first, these are purely industrial machines, um, but they're still rep reps at heart. And that means they're still publishing their design files and firmware mods, which you know, even for maker class machines has become surprisingly and worryingly rare. So their current machine is the HD500 over here, a Cartesian machine that has hot ends that go up to 500 degrees Celsius, dual extruders at that, a heated build chamber that goes up to 70 degrees, water-cooled components everywhere, an activated carbon filter for fumes on the inside, and just generally, you know, a balls-to-the-walls approach to an industrial machine. And it's specifically built for materials like PEK or polycarbonate. And if you want something bigger, this one over here is the one they're showing off today, and it's 35K and it's a Delta in a box. It does all the same things as the HT500 and more. So it's still got that 500 degrees Celsius hot end heated build chamber that goes to 70 degrees. And it looks like a lot more of a professional machine. And it's also got some new tricks up its sleeve. So obviously the machine here is still a very early prototype, but you can see the direction they're heading in. So gone are the dual extruders and they've instead replaced them with a swappable tool head that will be integrated into the machine itself and be able to swap tool heads, extruders, hot ends, whatever you got in there during a print. Then it's going to run through a quick self-calibration loop that aligns the nozzles to you know the previous one and before print it's obviously also going to do the mandatory automatic bed leveling so you might have noticed that this is not your run-of-the-mill delta printer first off it's got a direct extruder which is pretty rare for these machines and the reason for that is that the Bowden approach just wasn't precise enough for them and to keep that weight at bay they're using Igus many start backlash compensated spindles the first time I've actually seen them used in a delta like that but it seems to be working really well I didn't see any of the artifacts ringing wobbling you'd expect from such a large delta you know it's it's kind of the same thing I've been preaching for a while deltas aren't an inherently flawed uh, platform they just need to be built really well and if anyone can do that it's these guys so what's cool here is that these machines are still basically rep reps so the cooling cooling guys are very actively involved in the development of slick VR their main slicer choice um, and for at least for this early version they're using a RADS board, a heavily modified RADS board, so I don't know how much that still qualifies, alongside a quad-core computer that drives the Wi-Fi and touchscreen functionality of this machine. In the bottom is the space for those big filament spools that will allow you to fill up the build volume entirely. So if you're in the market for a professional 3D printer and don't really feel like going with the big names, then you should definitely keep your eyes peeled on the cooling and cooling guys. So that's it for now. Stay tuned for more coverage from the Fabcon 3D and Rapid Tech 2016.